Welcome to the Mentally Stronger podcast, the podcast where with every episode, we're learning practical ways to let go of stress and struggles, grow our mental strength, and live a happier, healthier, more meaningful life. I'm your host, Millie O'Brien, co-founder of mindfulness.com and creator of the Deep Resilience Method. I'm so glad to have you here with me today. Let's dive in to today's episode. So today I'm going to be talking about how perfectionism is the destroyer of love. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, hey, Melly, that's a pretty strong statement. Perfectionism is the destroyer of love. But hey, hear me out for a second. Let's explore this idea together a little bit. So when we are in pursuit of perfection, whatever our idea of that is, what we are usually doing is we are looking at something or someone or ourselves through the lens of a comparing mind, a critical mind, a judgmental mind. In other words, we do not fully accept them as they are. And that inhibits our ability to love them as they are fully. So we might look at someone, for instance, uh, but as we look at them, we have this idea about who we think they should be, how they should be behaving. Right? We, human beings, we do this all the time. We look at other people and we judge and we criticize and we fault find and we flaw find. So instead of accepting somebody just as they are, knowing that they're not perfect, of course, they are a mixed bag like every human. So but instead of accepting them as they are, we compare them to our idea of how we think they should be better. And in that moment, what we do is there's a little bit of inattention created between you and that other person, right? A, a little closing down, a little walling off, a little armoring up. When we don't accept and love them as they are, that's what we do. And maybe in our minds, we even, we want to fix them. We want to change them. We, we want to give them advice. We, we want to we want to get them to do what we want them to do, what we think they should do. And we do this kind of thing to ourselves too, right? We have these kind of mental measuring sticks where we compare ourselves to everyone else and we judge where we are on the scale. We measure where we are on the scale of looks. We measure where we are on the scale of money and success and fitness and intelligence. And we try to edge our way closer and closer to the top of the stick, to perfection, whatever our idea of perfection is, right? So when we're overlaying this comparing and critical mind onto our view of ourselves and each other, and the circumstances of our life, we will always see things as less than, not good enough, in need of fixing, in need of changing, right? And then we'll never see the perfection that's always right there in front of our eyes. What do I mean by perfection right in front of our eyes? Well, there's another way of looking at things. There's another mindset that is free of comparison or judgment that might see everything as just perfect, just as it is, even with all the cracks and the flaws and the apparent imperfections. And in that case, viewing things from that mindset, we would just accept wholeheartedly what's right there in front of our eyes. And what follows that kind of wholehearted acceptance is, of course, love. In fact, the Dalai Lama, when he was once asked, what is love, simply replied, love is the absence of judgment. So the truth is, is that we're not really seeing things clearly when we're looking through the eyes of what I would call perfectionism, what some people might call judgment. We might think to ourselves that we're seeing things clearly, but we're actually not. We're seeing the other person or ourselves, if we're doing it to ourselves, through the eyes of judgment. And so we're not really seeing ourselves as we truly are in that moment. We're seeing um, ourselves through a bunch of mental comparisons and labels and opinions and viewpoints. And when we do that, we're always going to feel this tension, maybe some resentment towards somebody 
or, you know, that, that kind of walling off or coldness or, or, or stress when we're living that way. So it's one of those subtle little mental habits that we do in the way that we relate to ourselves and others in the world that can be, uh, it seems like a subtle thing, but it has a really big impact, doesn't it? Especially in the way that we, we relate to others. And actually for many of us, the way we relate to ourselves, we never really give ourselves a break. We never really give other people a break. So here's my invitation for this week's mental strength practice. I invite you to try out being an imperfectionist, which means see if you can practice unconditional acceptance towards others, the softening of comparison and judgment, and not only to others, but also practice this on yourself. I know many of you are your own, you know, harshest critics. So if we can let go of the idea of perfection that there's some yardstick we're supposed to be measuring ourselves and others against, then we can make more space in our lives for authentic and wholehearted love. So that is this week's mental strength practice. See if you can let go of the idea of perfectionism and make room for people to be imperfect. And every time you do find yourself being critical in your head, judging, labeling, should, shouldn't <laughs> all that stuff. See if you can deliberately switch the focus to unconditional appreciation instead. You might even like to mentally say to yourself, I accept this person just as they are. I accept myself just as I am. I accept this situation just as it is. You can do this with your business with your life circumstances, with all kinds of different facets of life. If you find yourself judging, criticizing, fault finding in your mind, just keep switching your focus back to loving and accepting people and yourself included just the way you are and also the circumstances of your life. The most important part of all of this is with yourself and other people because what we all want most in this life is unconditional love and acceptance. We, we all want to be loved and accepted just the way that we are. So in practicing in this way, you are actually giving other people what they most crave in the deepest recesses of their heart and their gut and their spirit, which is this unconditional love and acceptance. So that's your practice for this week. I hope this is really fulfilling for you. I hope it brings you many benefits in your life. I think the other people in your life are going to notice it and you certainly will notice a lot more calm and ease within yourself if you can give yourself this great gift. As always, thank you for your practice. Thanks for being the kind of person who is practicing becoming kinder and wiser and mentally stronger in this world. And I will see you on the next episode of the Mentally Stronger podcast. Till then, enjoy the practice and take care. If you know someone who you think might benefit from listening to this episode, share it with them. Sharing it could really help them to feel better and improve the quality of their life. And if you found this episode helpful, remember to subscribe to the podcast so that you can receive more tips on growing your mental strength and you can keep practicing along with us every week. If you are wanting more support in becoming mentally stronger, come over to my website and take a look at all the coaching and training options that I have there for you. And I also have a bunch of free resources, including a five-day mental strength challenge that you can begin right away to kickstart your mental strength, improve your mental well-being, as well as your happiness and resilience. You can find all the links for this in the show notes. Thanks again for tuning in. Take care and stay strong.